Hi, today I'm going to talk about how I made these Gloomhaven Health and XP trackers on my resin 3D printer. Hi, welcome to Gray Lightning, my video blog about making things and playing games. And this is going to be the first in a series of videos about this project, which is making custom Gloomhaven trackers. Now, if you've played Gloomhaven, you know that the way you keep track of your health and your XP is with this cardboard uh, tracker, which has, it's nice, but it's made out of cardboard and these circles in the back, the dials are quite loose. It's easy to lose track of the numbers you're trying to record. So I thought this was a good uh, idea for a project. So I've got a lot of ground to cover in what I've learned here. Um, my intent is to give you an overview in this video but then to do three deep dives, one on design, one on the printing, because there's actually some tricks to being able to print this. And then the th third and final one of the deep dives is gonna be on how to finish it. And that includes things like the gold leaf you see here, stamping, also other ideas I tried that didn't work quite as well. So I'll give you an overview now, but like I said, if you're interested in this project, please subscribe and also hit the bell for notifications so that you know when each of these come out. I intend on um, putting out those other three videos over the course of the next couple weeks. So first let's talk about the design. The design is very much inspired by the original here, though it is a variation on it. It's a little bit smaller, because it has to fit on the bed of my resin 3D printer, so that's a constraint I'm working with. It has three pieces, the top and then two number dials in the back. And it's held together by these screwable rivets that you can buy on Amazon in different colors. And the advantage of that is that if it gets loose, you can just tighten it up very easily, and it's also very easy to assemble. It's easy to take apart if you need to do repairs for some reason. So. Basically, most of the design work I did, I did in Adobe Illustrator, because that's the drawing program I use. But everything I do, you could do in Inkscape, which is free. That's where I did the basic layout. That's where I got the sizing of everything correct. It's how I figured out how to lay out the 27 numbers on the number dials in the back, because I would just rotate it visually in the picture and put the new number in the little window, and that's how I uh, did the design for the dials. It's my, the way I do virtual testing, really, before I print anything out. So then those files are turned into SVG files. They're imported into Tinkercad, which is my 3D modeling software. It's free. It's very easy to use. And at that point, there's very little modeling that needs to be done, but I'll show you that as well. And then you export it into Chai2 Box is the slicing software I use. So I'll talk about all that in the design video. So the second step is the actual printing on the resin 3D printer. So of course I printed all along, I made several revisions on the design, I changed thickness of things, um, um, <laughs> I made some mistakes, like you can see this is two dials that are fused together because they were a little bit too big for the build plate. Um, they looked separate in the uh, Chai 2 box, but when you actually print them, they're too close and they fuse. But this is a very important experiment I ran right here because all of these components are printed flat on the bed. They're big, they're the, basically the full size of the bed and flat on the bed, which means if you don't make some adjustments, um, it's very hard to remove them. So I'm going to talk about some tips and tricks for getting easy removal for when printing flat on the bed. But also, the reason why I had to do it is because the dials that are in here, the black and white dials, are actually printed in both white and black resin. This was the first test I ran of that process. Uh, it's, I was using flesh and gray because that's just uh, resins I had available a, a big supply of. And it worked out pretty well. The, the advantage of doing this is that this dial, as it rotates in the background, um, I also have tried stamping and painting it, but you have a 
potential for that to wear off. It's not going to wear off. The black will not wear off if it's actually printed in black. Black numbers on a white background. So I'll talk about that in my second deep dive, which is on printing. So the third and final step is finishing your 3D printed pieces. And um, one of the things I didn't mention, a real benefit of printing flat on the bed is that these print very quickly. You know, the time it takes to print something is based on how many layers it takes. These are under 100 layers. Um, they print in less than 30 minutes. And that means that, first of all, it's easy to do rapid prototyping and refinements to your design. But then also, it's easy to print out just a whole bunch of samples um, to test the different finishing techniques, which is what I did. So I had a lot of ideas about things that I thought might work uh, based on my prior projects. And I was really surprised about the things that didn't work and the things that did work. And it sent me back to print some more samples and to do some more tests. And I ended up with some results I hadn't even expected. So some of the things I've tested is, as a miniature painter, uh, dry brushing, I thought it had potential because of the, I've got a raised design here. And dry brushing, I thought, would do a good job on that. But uh, I could do better than this, but uh, in general, I don't think this is the way to go. So I was pretty disappointed with that technique. Um, another uh, painting technique I used that I was quite happy with, and I, had, I expected it to work because I used it in a prior video about 3D printing tokens. And that's stamping on, a, on an uh, acrylic paint rolled on a gel plate. And so this is an example of how that turned out on the tracker top. But I also did test it on the dials themselves. Now, once again, I, I think printing these in black and white resin is the best idea. But if you want something faster and easier, you can very easily and successfully stamp these and get nice, clear black numbers on white. The only thing, the sample is gray and red, but uh, I actually have a black and white one here. And you wouldn't be able to tell the difference. The only issue is you're going to need to protect those numbers. Everything you do here, the last step has to be to clear coat it, whether it's the gold leaf or the uh, painted pieces. And that will help protect it from the friction and, the, and wear. So that is an option for the number dials as well. Another thing I used for the design on the top, just testing it, is a thing called rub and buff, which is a little, which are little tubes of, of uh, color treated wax, basically, that you apply with your finger to do gilding. And it comes in a lot of uh, colors, and it actually worked pretty well. Um, this is not a good sample because the background is painted, but the, but the Rub and buff component of it is pretty interesting. So that has potential and I'm going to explore further in the future. But one thing I was really excited about was to try gold leaf. And the way gold leaf works is you have sizing, which is a thin um, glue, basically, that you paint on and you let it dry. And everywhere you've applied it, the gold leaf will stick to it permanently. And then, of course, at the end, you do have to do a clear coat to protect it. But um, so I did that. I applied it to the raised design. I let it dry. I applied the gold leaf. And what I learned is that resin, even fully cured resin, has enough residual tackiness that the gold leaf stuck to it in places. So the recessed areas that I thought would be all just white um, were an ugly mess of gold and white. And so I said, wow. Well, that's disappointing. But then I said, well, you know, it's already ruined. I might as well try something else with it. So what I did is I then applied another coat of the sizing to those recessed areas intentionally. And I tried some multicolored gold leaf flake that I had and put it on. You'll see me do this in the um, third video. And uh, I don't know, it might be too colorful for you, but I like a lot of bling, so I was, <laughs> I was really pleased with the way this turned out. And then, uh, but here is what the real product in the end should look like if you do the entire thing with, uh, in gold leaf. 
and it's quite flashy. I think it's beautiful. This is rose gold. There's lots of different colors of gold you can use. So, um, but there's some tricks to applying this successfully to a raised design. So that's also going to be included in the third deep dive episode. So there it is. Um, I really love this project. Uh, I learned a lot doing it. I learned a lot at every step of the way. I made a lot of mistakes, so you don't have to. And uh, if you're interested, please subscribe. And like I said, hit the notification bell so that you know when the next episode comes out. I'll try to get those three deep dive episodes out in the next couple of weeks.